The big game changer is that 5G will use much higher frequency bands than previously thought viable for mobile broadband and other applications. Such millimeter wave signals have physical properties that are both a limitation and a strength. They tend to travel best in narrow and straight lines, and they do not go through physical objects as well. But brilliant engineers have developed new antennas that can aim and amplify signals. Now, to make this work, five, the 5G build-out is going to be very infrastructure intensive, requiring massive deployment of small cells. I'm confident that the actions will lead to a cornucopia of unanticipated, innovative uses and will generate tens of billions of dollars in economic activity. And that's damn important because it means that U.S. companies will be the first out of the gate. And that is why 5G is a national priority. And stay out of the way of technological development. Unlike some countries, we do not believe that we should spend the next couple of years studying what 5G should be or how it should operate. The future has a way of inventing itself. Turning innovators loose is far preferable to expecting committees and regulators to define the future. We won't wait for the standards. We're already seeing the industry gearing up to seize this opportunity. Verizon and AT&T tell us they'll begin deploying 5G trials in 2017. And the first commercial deployments they're talking about are expected in 2020. And we're not done. As part of our July 14 action, we also plan to ask for comments on opening up other high-frequency bands. Many of the high-frequency bands that we will make available for 5G currently have some satellite users, as well as some Defense Department applications, or at least the possibility of future satellite and defense users. This means sharing will be required between satellite and terrestrial wireless, an issue that is especially relevant in the 28 gigahertz band. But if anyone tells you that they know the details of what 5G is going to become, run the other way. If something can be connected, it will be connected. Hundreds of billions of microchips connected in products from pill bottles to plant waterers. We must reject the notion that the 5G future will be the sole provenance of urban areas. The 5G revolution will touch all corners of our country. A lot more antenna siting decisions by local governments and tightened our shot clock for siting application reviews. America's local governments will play an important role in determining how we fulfill this national priority. You can be sure of only one thing. The biggest Internet of Things application has yet to be imagined. Tens of billions of dollars in economic activity. And that's damn important. Ask a question, we'll start with you. Sir, needn't egg me on on this one. Uh, moments ago, I was attempting to talk to some people who came to attend the meeting and have concerns about radiation and 5G. And uh, one of your security force um, uh, intervened, uh, told the guy he couldn't show me the T-shirt that he had wished to display at the meeting, forced him to put it away, and confiscated my FCC-issued ID. Is this consonant with the discussion that ought to be taking place here? And what's your reaction to this action by your staff? I've just heard about it for the first time, Todd. I mean, obviously, this is an open meeting, uh, you know, and I'm sure that if your uh, if your credentials have uh, have been mistakenly uh, taken, uh, you will get them back. But there is a responsibility for uh, everybody who comes here to behave responsibly.
By approving the Spectrum Frontiers order, the United States becomes the first country in the world to identify and open up vast amounts of high frequency spectrum for 5G networks and applications. This is the most significant step yet. And uh, our BDS proceeding is dealing with that issue. Lydia. Hey, Tom, with the Hi, study showing wireless causes cancer subthermally, how can you proceed with more wireless expansion with our 60 standards only recognizing thermal effects, ignoring thousands of studies showing cancerous effects, neurological effects, reproductive harm, immune Lydia, do you have a, do you have a question? I do have a question, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I'll, I'll, answer, I'll answer your question, Lydia. Lydia Bayoud, Bloomberg BNA. to this very important interview that is posted on Take Back Your Powers channel. Um, and I hope that you all watch it and circulate it, more importantly. Um, but you just heard it from the FCC chairman himself, Tom Wheeler. We're not going to study it. We are not going to have standards. We're not going to have any kind of regulations. We are just going to let it loose. We're just going to let it loose. This is the technological control grid. And we will all be controlled by it. But the health effects of this, well, it is very, very dangerous. Um, and don't you love it when people just ignore important questions? Flat out ignore it. Like it wasn't even said. Like that guy wasn't even posing a question. It just goes on and just... They ignore questions like that because they don't want to answer it, because they don't want to look at that fact, that wireless, this wireless environment is causing cancer. That's one of the reasons why cancer is exponentially increasing. They have security forces remove an advocate's t-shirt because the t-shirt has writing on it something about wireless health effects. They take away a reporter from Bloomberg's credentials because he's talking to an advocate for wireless health effects. That in itself should raise eyebrows. The link is below. Have a good day, guys.